So many aspects of our lives are integrally dependent upon our ability to harness the power of electricity. The work that an electrical engineer does can be extremely varied. From the tiniest little computer chip research for something that's a thousandth or a ten thousandth of a human hair to someone working on a wind turbine in a field which is you know, enormous in scale. Basically anything to do with magnetism, electricity and all that. Pretty much everything that we think of in our, our modern culture uh, comes back to electrical engineering. Once you get to a higher level, it pretty much branches out into anything. You can study electrical engineering, but if you want to work in medicine, imagine an uh, emergency room. You are surrounded by electronics. I did some instrumental design for DNA sequencers. You could go into electrical engineering with a little bit of computing fo focus, and you could work for an internet startup. It is very interesting. And every time I enter the lab, I learn something new. Well, we have electrical engineers that, because they can understand these really complex circuit systems, they'll help people model traffic jams in large cities and help them mitigate that. But system is a really broad term. So I'll give you an example. We have someone that works here where um, he's an electrical, and he does system level work. But he basically puts sensors on bridges, and then they'll go to one end of the bridge, and they'll basically hit it with a fancy hammer and then they can model the whole bridge as a system and basically determine in its end of life and if they can basically just fix this strut over here, it's gonna last five more years and it's gonna save you $20 million. You know, it's the balance between those two things of delivering something that is useful to the public but at the same time getting to push the boundaries of science. We've created some of the world's first transparent displays, like a truly transparent color display that looks like a window when it's turned off. In our lab, we concentrate a lot on like lab on a chip devices. So instead of like sending a sample out to a lab that would take 48 hours to analyze, we could basically make everything on one single chip, and then ha you know you could analyze that in, in, within a few minutes. We've also in that display same display area, we've worked on electronic paper. So imagine an iPad that you can fold up and drop in your pocket as well. When uh, somebody has had a, a mild stroke, uh, they may have had a little bleeding from the brain into the, the cranial cavity. And so we've developed a device that shines light through it. Then we use uh, mathematics that are very similar to how a cell phone figures out whether it can communicate with a radio tower to actually analyze that color spectrum and determine whether there's bleeding in there that is indicating that there's been a stroke. Well, I decided to be an engineer when I was 14. <laughs> I went through two years of training in, in, uh, in the Navy to do um, basically be an electrician on a submarine. I always really was interested in science, always. Even in my sp spare time, you know, that's what I did. I was like, okay, yeah, one day I want to, you know, make something, make a device which would be useful. While I was on the boat, pretty much anything electrical that broke or was not working, we pretty much had to fix. And I didn't even know what a PhD was when I started. I had never even heard of it. I don't come from that type of family at all. Once I got out, I kind of wanted to pursue a little bit higher level, and then that's kind of when I started to do my undergrad here at UC. I mean, electronics is just a base. Once you go be become a doctorate, you have a doctorate, you can work in interdisciplinary fields. What do you have in STEM? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, right? All four things are required in electrical engineering. Being willing to take that, that algebra class or that calculus class or that physics class in high school, and even though everybody thinks it's hard. It's hard to envision the importance of these things early on, but as you get into your second and third year of study, all of a sudden you'll see all those fundamentals you study start to come out. In almost any engineering program, you're gonna get lots of math, lots of physics, lots of, of you know, the, the basic sciences to build your, your foundation on. And then you're gonna learn processes of design and, and how to document the work you do. There are a lot of good technical colleges which can get students started right away where you might not have to, to go as advanced as some of the math. There are outstanding uh, undergraduate 
institutions in Ohio. And if you're motivated because you like what you do, then you're going to be more su successful and then you're going to be more motivated and it just feeds upon itself and the rest takes care of itself. Having that, that desire and that passion for learning, that's, that's the key thing. <laughs>